What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'll be taking you through a Minecraft mod, surprisingly, and it's definitely one that'll bring back memories if you're an OG Minecraft gamer. The mod that I'm speaking about is the Aether. This mod, or rather mod pack, was really popular back in the day and obviously only really worked for much, much older versions of Minecraft before development was abandoned. This, however, is a revival project bringing the Aether to 1.2 and beyond. This is fantastic. If you enjoyed the original Aether, you'll definitely enjoy this humble recreation for modern versions of Minecraft and fully multiplayer compatible. If you'd like to know how to set up a server for this, do let me know in the comments down below. But for now, let's get installing this so we can play on our own system. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the Aether on Modrinth, which is probably the best place you could download this from. You can also find it on CurseForge, but I'd recommend Modrinth. When you're here, simply scroll down and on the left hand side, you should find featured versions. In here will probably be the version of Minecraft you're looking for, otherwise click see all and you can choose a different version with much more granular control. Once again, I'll be downloading the latest release for Minecraft 1.20.1. When we click this and choose download, it'll download a jar file that we can use with Forge or NeoForge. If you don't know about all the drama with Forge, essentially a ton of the developers left and created their own fork of Forge being NeoForge. Anyways, there's two different versions of Forge. You can choose to download whichever you want, and I'm not too sure what'll happen in the future, but for now, this is compatible with both of them, at least for 1.20.1. Simply pick one to download and install it. Obviously though, first of all, you will need Minecraft 1.20.1 downloaded vanilla. If you haven't already got it, head across to the Minecraft launcher, then Java edition, followed by installations, and make sure you have one for 1.20.1. Otherwise, click Click new installation, we'll type in the name 1.20.1 and from the latest release drop down, we'll type in 1.20.1, otherwise you can scroll and find it, then click on it. That's it, create and fire up the game at least once so we can create all of the required files to install Forge if you don't already have it. Then downloading Forge or NeoForge for 1.20.1, you'll also find a link to this in the description down below. Simply download the 1.20.1 installer, which is currently the latest. Otherwise, you should find other versions somewhere here. Uh, click to go to the versions list, and in here, you can select a version from the drop down in the top right. Once the file's downloaded, you can open it up using Java. But of course, at this stage, you hopefully have Java installed and set up. If you don't, you'll find links to it in the description down below. To follow along with the installer, choose Install Client and click OK. Then a short download will be completed, and more than likely, it will fail if you haven't launched up Minecraft 1.20. 0.1 or so just yet. That's why we ran it first. When it's done, we can head back to the Minecraft launcher and in here, you should now see under Minecraft Java Forge 1.20.1. Otherwise, you can choose it from the installations tab, creating a new profile. We'll play it at least once, although you don't really need to do this if you've played Forge before, as it'll create the mods folder for us. So I'll wait for it to start, and now we can close out of it. Sweet. I'll hold start and press R, or the flag key and press R, and in here we'll type in percentage, app data percentage, and hit enter. Then we're looking for dot Minecraft. Simply open this up, followed by the mods folder. If you don't have it, you can create the folder called mods. If for some reason you're not able to navigate here, on Windows 11, choose View, followed by Show, and make sure that file name extensions and hidden items are both ticked. On Windows 10, at the bar at the very top, you'll find a View tab, and on the far right, these two options. Now that we've navigated to App Data Roaming Minecraft Mods, in here we'll drop the jar file for the Aether mod. So simply drag it out of your downloads, drop it in here, and that's it. We've now successfully installed the Aether mod. All we need to do now is fire up the game once more, so I'll head back to the Minecraft launcher, followed by making sure we have the correct version selected, and you can hit play. Otherwise, head to the installations tab, click the three dots next to forge here, edit, and under more options, we can give it some more RAM, say maybe eight gigs or six gigs, etc. You can check how much RAM you have with control shift and escape to bring up the task manager. And in here under the performance tab, you should find your memory somewhere in here. Just a reminder, you can't give Minecraft all of your RAM or RAM that's already in use. It needs to be RAM that's left over and not in use. You can see more detailed numbers at the very bottom telling you how much is left. 
saved. I have a ton of RAM, so I can happily give it eight or even more. I'll save and play Forge or Neo Forged with our Aether mod pack in it. When we reach the main menu, you should hopefully see in mods that we have the Aether install here, giving us information about it, etc. I'll click done, followed by single player in this case, create new world, and we'll start one in creative just to test it out. So Aether. We'll create the world, yes. And once inside, let's grab ourselves some glowstone and of course a water bucket as well. With this, we should be able to craft the fabled Aether portal. And for once, unlike in memes, it should actually work. So building the same structure as a nether portal, we can simply place the water bucket in it. And just like that, the Aether portal has been ignited in Minecraft 1.20. This is huge. We'll hop into it. And after ascending to the Aether, we get a quest book or book of lore rather, as well as a golden parachute, which should help us get back to the normal world below us. That's it. You can run around, explore, collect new ores, complete little dungeons and quests, much like the old original Aether. This is huge. The Aether mod was something I definitely looked back and reminisced on, and it's great that we can finally actually play this in an up-to-date version of Minecraft with up-to-date loot, etc. Obviously not to mention there's tons of stuff added by this mod that isn't otherwise in normal Minecraft. Obviously, because this is a Forge or Neo Forge mod, you can drop your own other mods in here as well, lighting, shader packs, etc. All the way to not enough items, etc. Anything that you usually would. It's not a total conversion mod pack in that it's difficult to add to. It's just a single mod, meaning that it should be pretty compatible with other things. But anyways, that's really it for this quick guide. Hopefully you found this useful. Once again, if you'd like to find out how to make a Neo Forge server or an Aether specific server, do let me know in the comments down below. And I'll definitely get across to it. For now, we'll head back down to the overworld and using our golden parachute, right clicking, we can float down to safety. That's it. So thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.